Before we talk about middlewares, we first need to know about the behind the scene of our application. There are two files that we haven't talked about in the previous video, which are appsetting.json and program.cs. Appsetting.json is a JSON file that we can create some static values that we are going to use inside our projects. For example, the connection string of our application or some settings for the logging system that we are going to write. Then we can use these values inside our project. Then we have the program.cs. Program.cs is the entry point of the whole project that we have. All of the configuration for the project will go inside program.cs. Before version 6 of .NET, there was another file called startup.cs, which from version 6 forward, the program.cs and the startup.cs has been combined, and now we only have the program.cs file. Inside program.cs, we have two parts now. The first part is before builder being built. The builder is where we config our application. We can add dependency injection. I do have a separate video about dependency injection. I will put a link in the description and you can watch it. And in the second part, we do have the request handling pipeline, which is also known as middlewares. There are so many middlewares that you can use. What middlewares will do is they will manipulate your requests that are coming from the user or you are returning to the user. When a request comes into the application, it will go through each middleware from top to bottom. For example, here is the middleware for HTTPS redirections. Or here we have use static files. If you remember from the previous video, I told you that www root are static files that are public inside our project and they do not need any kind of authorization or access checking and everyone can see the files inside our www roots. If we do not use the app.useStatic files middleware, we cannot have the www root. It will go through each middleware one by one. After the request went through all of our middlewares, went into our controllers, and all the process is done and we will return a result, it will again go through the middlewares and only after that it will show the user the result. You can also write your own middleware. For example, if you want to have an error page, if the response status code is 500. 500 response is for internal server error. And if you want to have a custom page for all of our 500 results, we will do it inside a middleware because an internal server error will not go through the controller so we can return a custom page. We need to define it inside a middleware. Before we end this video, we have a map controller route, which I'm going to explain to you in a separate video, maybe in the next video, and it's going to be all about routing, which I'm going to tell you multiple ways to create a routing for your methods and controllers. Thank you for watching. If you want to inspire me to create more videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video so the video gets suggested to more people. See you in the next video. Bye bye.